morning and welcome to another episode of On The Couch with me your host Maynard. Now <laughs> it's been a couple of days and a lot has happened. I think there is so much we could talk about. The Warriors, so much expectations at AFCON. We thought they'd qualify after the defeat to Egypt. We're like, they'll beat Uganda. They didn't. We're like, yeah, it's okay. We'll beat DRC. We have been in DRC before. Didn't happen that way. We were walloped. A proper beating. So we're back home. But that's a story for another day. For today, I want us to talk about one issue. Prophet Walter Magaya. He has hogged the limelight for the last week. I mean, the last time someone got so much attention like that was me. Yeah, November. I was the last person to get that kind of attention. Magaya's done it though. He's on a week and he's still rolling, but the issue isn't funny. It's a very serious issue. Sexual assault, rape. A girl came out, much rather, a girl's parents came out. They cried rape. A guy kept quiet. The girl came out. She said I wasn't raped. But in so doing, tacitly admitted that she had had a sexual relationship with the guy. Now, of course, she didn't say she slept with him, but there were three allegations here. One was she was sexually abused. Two was she had sexual intercourse with the prophet. And three was she gave birth to a baby prophet. She spoke about sexual assault only. She didn't go deeper and speak about the baby prophet and the sexual relation. Tacit admission, that's up to you to decide. But nonetheless, in the aftermath of that, the story just won't go away. You have one sect of people saying she was paid together with the husband. You have some people who are saying, you know what? This was wrong to begin with. Why were people making accusations without a victim? I kind of lean on that side. If you read my tweets, you would have seen my opinion. I said, sexual assault is a very serious offense and it shouldn't be trivialized. And what we need to aim for at all times is to make sure that when somebody alleges sexual abuse, we have a victim who's willing to report, who's willing to go to court, who's willing to see through a trial and result in an actual conviction. Now, I want us to go into the deeper issues, you know, surrounding this. And I think as a first port of call, we need to separate what is legal versus what is immoral. Now, is it legal to sleep with a girl who is below the age of 16 in Zimbabwe, right? It's statutory rape. Even if she says, yes, you are raping her, okay? Two, it is illegal to sleep with a person without consent. If you're a prophet and you lead a church and you are a Christian pastor and you're married, it's immoral to sleep with anyone else other than your wife. It's also immoral to sleep with young children. Now, it's also immoral to sleep with the young children within your ministry whose parents have entrusted them to be raised, reared, and guided by you as a spiritual father. I mean, both the woman and her daughter share the father. They're all daddy's babies, right? But daddy cannot sleep with his babies. But what is immoral is not always illegal. But most of the time, everything that is illegal is immoral. But that doesn't mean that everything that is immoral is illegal. So in that perspective, what my guy did, is it wrong, is it right? It's wrong, yes, but not illegal. We want to take the conversation further. There was an issue raised by some people, which is the issue of sexual grooming. Grooming is illegal in some places. It's immoral everywhere. Could Magaya be guilty of it? Could be, could be not. I saw the video of the victim. I think she even said people who are fighting for my rights can go hang and people were pretty hurt. But at the end of the day, it's difficult for you to want to advocate on behalf of a victim who says, I'm not a victim. I feel bad for any parent who believes their child has been abused. But ultimately, whatever happened between the two happened behind closed doors. And only Walter and the girl, Chennai, know what happened. And if she says she's not a victim, she isn't a victim. 
But that doesn't mean that my guy didn't do anything wrong. It's not the first time he has been involved in something of this kind. You remember the issue with Petronella Donozo? She recorded him. They are recorded phone calls on YouTube till today. Those phone calls were never disputed. There's a video of my guy openly admitting that he was recorded by a girl he was having an affair with. And then he paid a dude 10,000 US dollars because the dude had gotten a hang of it and wanted to make it go away. Things soured later, but yeah, that was the story, but you get it. That's one instance that we know. And there's a few other instances. So what does this mean? Is Walter Magaya pervert? No. And you know what frustrates me the most about this entire thing is, you know, a lot of women who get raped in churches, they just leave the church. Imagine a girl who goes to Magaya's hotel and there are 200 staff members there and she gets raped in a room by Magaya. When she leaves, will she report? Because ultimately she's alone and there are 200 potential witnesses who are willing to say that didn't happen. A lot of girls who do get raped in church, they just walk away. They just move on and they keep that horror in their memory. It's a nightmare for the rest of their lives. Now, let's say one or two wanted to come out. Then they see this issue with Chennai. A victim's come out, my guy must fall. Hashtag, let's do it. And then two days later, the victim is saying, I wasn't raped. I hope you understand why I was skeptical to begin with. It's because of that. Because I got the sense once the allegation came through a third party and on the video, the mother is scratching the dad, you know, telling him what to say, what not to say. And you can tell then that, okay, there's a bit of choreography going on here. So highly suspicious. And people reacted by saying, we are attacking victims and we are making it difficult for victims to actually come out and say we were raped. Well, newsflash, the victim did eventually come out and told the people who were saying us, the skeptical ones, are bad to go and <coughs> hang. And my frustration is real victims will develop apathy. They won't report. They will feel like these guys are untouchable. So you see, my solution has always been, if you want to keep a sensitive subject sane, you have to keep it truthful, you have to keep it honest, and you have to keep it sincere. It's okay to want to jump on and take down an abuser, but you need strategy and you need to actually get real victims. And when I say real victims, I mean people who are willing to actually go to court and testify. Do you guys remember Magaya going to court for rape not long ago? And it ended up with the victim refusing to testify. I think the state declared a hostile witness and they just couldn't get her to testify. She recanted a statement. It was a mess. Some people say, yeah, but it's because he paid. He paid for it. But you see, if he's able to pay himself out of these things, it's because there's no environment where victims feel safe. You need a victim-friendly unit. I know we have one at the, at the police, but we need a wholesome victim-friendly unit such that they are inaccessible, you know? at least buffer your witnesses, you know, insulate them to the point that they cannot be enticed by money. If victims are changing their statements because of money, that's an indictment on our justice system. Then there's another issue. And I spoke about this where I said, do you understand that when we say we have laws and we've got a justice process, we are meant to abide by it to the end? Do you realize that if you catch a man red-handed stabbing another man, the justice system demands that he be arrested, taken to court, but he still has a right to enter his defense. We cannot say this guy's done too much and because if he's done too much, the next time anyone accuses him, let's lynch him on social media, let's attack him, let's do this and that. It's good for egos, but doesn't help with the legal case. And it turns into egg on our faces when we have instances like this where the victim comes out and says, you're crazy. I wasn't raped. While we're on the same subject, right? I want us to actually take it a little bit deeper to the actual victims themselves. There's a phenomenon. I like to call it post-termination abuse. This is what happens everywhere. You get very young, pretty girls. They intentionally, willingly enter into a physical or an emotional 
or a sexual relationship with a married person. Oftentimes, the married person is wealthy, powerful, and influential. And it comes with benefits, like all girlfriends of rich guys. You get a car, you get a house, you get rental, you get everything you can think of. Somewhere along the way, married men tend to get tired of one girl and move to the other. And they can't really leave their wife for you. And they're not really going to marry a second wife. So after a while, they just spit you out. And when they spit you out, the reaction most of the time is to cry abuse. Yeah. Revenge allegations. They are common, they are popular, and people are getting blackmailed left, right, and center. And sometimes it's it's a scheme, I will tell you, and especially in Harare. This one, ask anyone. town. They will sleep with anyone they think has got money. A few days later, they want money for morning afters. After money for morning afters, the morning afters didn't work. They now need money for abortion. Hey, after the abortion, there's a complication, there's a procedure needed, bang. After the procedure, there's this and that. My mother found out, my family is fronting. And from there, it just, it just goes, it just explodes. I'm gonna tell your wife, I'll tell the world, I'll tell everybody. This is happening everywhere. Now my question was, if you willingly get into a relationship with a married person, and you know they're married, and you date them, and you find out months later that I should have known better, I was taken for a ride. Why would you wanna wake up and cry abuse? I think I've said it, I see a lot of posts on social media of women who come out and say, this guy's a douchebag dad, he's not taking care of my kid, he's doing this and that, and we're dating was this and that, he's a serial cheater. And all of these things come out when these people want something. Let's be careful. There are people out there who literally want to leverage outrage. Because you see, social media pressure is, is, is this new thing, you know, of dealing with reprobates. But at the same time, there are people who are smart enough to know that I can use this to make dollar. And I can use this in a blackmail plot, in extortion, etc. And they are doing it, right? It's happening everywhere. And the responsibility is on you and on me to interrogate each and every single circumstance and allegation that we choose to be emotionally involved in. I say choose because some things happen. I mean, I found out the other day that Black Coffee could be cheating on his wife. I didn't flinch. I didn't mind. I didn't care. I wasn't emotionally vested. Some people were. Some people are emotionally vested. There are people who get way more upset than the people in the situation. So they choose to be. So when you choose to involve yourself in the situation emotionally, make sure you're not being taken for a ride because when the victim comes out and says, you should go hang, it'll hurt. And speaking of that, before I forget, common tendency in Zimbabwe, we like to mourn more than the bereaved. Always remember that these people were strangers to you until they started trending on social media, right? Don't come and say you care about them. Don't come and say that, oh no, I'm upset about this. It might affect you personally and you might have a similar experience, but don't get too emotionally involved in it. They are still strangers. We need to get that right. And another thing that we like to do as Zimbabweans, which is, I don't know, it's, it's, it's shocking is we like to be fountains of information on cases we know nothing about. I have literally seen people testify about people's characters, people they don't know. When it comes to bashing someone that you don't like, it's easy for people to invent facts. And when they invent facts, when you read them on social media, your assumption is that this is the truth. And it isn't the truth. Goodbye.